Hey there everyone. I have today what I hope is a helpful video for you comparing uh, several math curriculum uh, that we have used or have in our house at least and um, some of these uh, or actually one of them I have not used. I have not used math lessons for a living education and I haven't used part B of this yet. We are getting ready to start that in, uh, next week. But I have used uh, 2A and I've also used BJU Press Math a couple levels. So I am speaking from um, experience here and also having the materials uh, in front of me. So I hope that the things that I'm going to mention by way of comparison are helpful to you as you uh, try and find a math curriculum for your littles. So the very first thing I want to uh, say is I am in no way sponsored by any of these three companies or products. I have not received any for free or anything like that. I purchased or or borrowed these. Um, this is actually borrowed right now um, so that I could look at it. And um, so not, none of my comments, you know, are swayed in any way um, um, in that regard. Also, I will say that. Um, I've already done flip throughs of uh, Singapore math 2A and 2B and math um, from BDU Press. So I'm not going to do flip throughs in this video. I am just going to do um, point out some comparisons um, between the curriculums. And lastly, one last little uh, housekeeping uh, thing I'll tell you is that I don't have the BGU Press Math Curriculum book with me because I've uh, lent it out to another local homeschool mom to look through for her uh, kiddos. So I will be speaking from experience, but I won't be, um, like I said, flipping through anything today. So I will just uh, leave a link below to my flip through of that curriculum. So if you want to head over to, uh, and watch that after this, you can. So first of all, I'm just going to let you know uh, some basic comparisons. First of all, is the number of books. This right here, one book, okay, it's about yay thick, and um, this is it. This is all you need, one book um, for your whole uh, school year. So there's no teacher's guide, there's no visuals to print off, or no um, extra practice books. Everything is in here, your lesson and your uh, student's work. Um, for Singapore math, uh, you, you need at least um, two workbooks, okay? So the way that Singapore is set up, you need a part A and a part B. That would make up a full school year. Now, it doesn't have to be the same number level. Some people would do 2B and 3A would make up a school year, um, but it, you do need an A and a B to make up a full school year's worth of work. There are textbooks that are... Um, um, helpful in teaching the lesson and giving examples and there are also instructors guides that you can purchase as well. We use a uh, Heart of Dakota and they provide kind of the t what the teacher's guide or home instructor's guide would provide in the way of teaching lessons so this is all I have for um, my Singapore um, year but there are uh, extra word problem books, there are extra um, practice books, so you could get upwards of six or more books with Singapore if you bought everything they offer for a grade level. BJU Press Math also has extra books available. There's a teacher's guide, a student workbook, and um, an extra review book if you choose to purchase it, and a test packet with answer key. So you get a lot more for the money that you pay but as far as number of books, <laughs> but you do get a lot more books, okay? So there are a ton, a ton of books with BGU Press, a ton of books with this, and one book with this. So that's one huge difference. Um, cost, obviously, is another difference. Because of all the books that come with it and the amount of material, BGU Press is the most expensive at about $100 for a whole grade kit of math. And um, Singapore, these actually run $15 each, these booklets here. So I spent about $60 in math cost um, for second grade, although you can spend more, like I said, if you get the extra word problem book or the extra practice book. Um, this here costs right around $30. It is less on some websites, but uh, I will put the link below where you can get it from Masterbooks and actually um, read up on some other reviews and things like that at their website. So about $30. So obviously this is the least expensive, the least amount of books. It's very um, approachable in that it's just one thing. All right, so the next um, comparison, just in, in way of general comparisons, is the, the look. Um, 
there is color in like the lesson part here, um, some more than others, but there is color spread throughout the book here, okay? So it's not all black and white. In the textbooks for Singapore, the lessons are all in color, okay? This would be like the lesson example book or whatever you want to call it. But the workbook that the, the students actually do their work in is all black and white. There's no color pages. See, we just have one left. We're really ready to be do almost done with A. I'll show you B since there's more pages. But it's all black and white. Now, I was reading um, on another review that the reason that these are, are black and white is because, like when it has, let me show you real quick here. Um, when it has like these little seals, when they get a problem correct, the children are allowed to color it in uh, in a Singapore school. So that's how they um, kind of use these workbooks to introduce color, is they get to color it if they get their problem right. So I, I didn't, didn't know that before, but I read that in a review recently. Okay, so um, and BJ Press is color throughout. It's color, color in the, um, the entire lesson and, and in all of the the practice problems. So pretty pretty comparable there as far as uh, look and color. Um, and one other thing I will um, say before I get into comparing the content, which is probably what you really want to hear about, um, the three whole perforations here come in both BGU Press and Math Lessons for a Living Education. Those are, um, you know, those are like a personal preference thing. I guess you could always just a three hole punch it, but Singapore's um, textbooks are not three hole punched already. The perforations in the older editions of this are not very well <laughs> done, so it's really hard to rip them out um, of the book. These perforations have given me no trouble. BJU actually has um, like a glue bound uh, binding, so they rip out real easy. Um, I've been told uh, that the newer editions of this um, they've, they've improved their, their perforations um, by choosing a different printer, so uh, the newer versions, I guess the pages are about a little easier if you like to stuff them in work boxes or folders for the week or however you like to do that. Um, just keep that in mind. Um, um, you know, you want to make sure you get a newer edition. This printing, I think, is 2017. I think I saw when I was looking through this before. 2017. So. Um, okay, so those are all the general comparisons. Now I'm going to get into content. And what I'm going to do for this is I am going to, and there's a reason I'm going to do this, so stick with me, okay? I am going to compare BJU Press Math first grade with this first. And there's a reason I'm doing that, okay? Then I'm going to compare this with my the second grade Singapore that I'm using now. And again, there's a reason that I'm doing it that way, and I hope it becomes clear at least by the end of the video. <laughs> So the first thing that I will um, do is open up here to the table of contents. Oops, I think I passed it. I think it's way back here. This little table of contents, or they call it the scope and sequence. I'm going to move this out here just for a second so you can zoom in here if you want to see. Um, I, again, I will leave the link below where you can um, look at the PDF preview on the Masterbooks website uh, so you can actually see what's written here. But the first thing I'm going to compare as far as content, okay, is I'm when I when I got this book to, to review, and I, I got this book, um, borrowed this book so that I could see where we would be coming from BGU Press 1, where we would be, you know, where we would fall in this in this series. Now I got this book because it does say recommended for grade 2, ages 6 to 8, okay? So that's why I got this level. Um, as I started looking through the scope and sequence, I noted that the first um, 27 um, weeks, the first 20, oh wait, there's one other thing. I'm going to stop there real quick. I'm going to stop there <laughs> because I wanted to tell you one thing first before I get into comparing the content, the number of lessons, okay? This is actually scheduled. There's a schedule here that goes all the way up to 180 days. Of assignments and activities so they schedule you a full 180 days of instruction okay and they do it up front here by week so 36 weeks okay 36 weeks BJU Press schedules 165 lessons giving you about two weeks worth of 
um, wiggle room or opportunity to take you know breaks things like that uh, Singapore math has about a hundred and sixty ish 165 they have um, they have about um, 130 exercises but they're really some of them are really long and I would recommend doing them all at once so you can get a schedule from my um, my father's world or you can get a schedule from um, um, Heart of Dakota which is what you use if you use the Heart of Dakota guides and they actually will take Singapore and break it up into um, a 36 week or 34 week school year I'm just looking here real quick yeah I didn't see any test days or things like that so everything isn't necessarily like an actual lesson in here either and I'm gonna get to that like an actual sit-down math lesson so I'm gonna get to that in a minute but um I just thought you should know that they schedule you a full 180 days in here so just keep that in mind you could probably double up on the lessons because they're they are fairly late okay so now back to the content sorry for that little uh, detour but I wanted I wanted to mention that before I get into the content comparisons because um, that will kind of play into some of my comp um, future comparisons here okay so looking at the first 27 weeks of what what this level is calling the second grade level I went through and I looked because just at looking at the topics it, I was like you know we really covered all of this in first grade with BJU Press all the way up to week 27 that's three-fourths of the school year so if I would have picked this book up I I was thinking man I would have been repeating pretty much our entire first grade year up through week 27 and so what I started to do is I started to look back um, I'm going to go here to um, telling time um, let's see that is 125 so I'm gonna go back here and I'm gonna start looking at the lessons and what I did was I started to look at the problems look at how many were assigned look at the 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 depth that they went into with each concept and what I noted was in fact that with the exception of telling time and some money concepts it was pretty much the exact same content of BJU Press Math 1. Now having said that um, I don't want to give you know the conclusion or anything that I feel like this is behind or not appropriate for second grade I just am trying to help you make a comparison okay because the methodology of a Charlotte Mason inspired curriculum is different than a traditional program like BJU Press or Singapore so in some way I'm not really comparing apples to apples here but when you are looking at placing your child or looking at the flow of your day or things like that these comparisons can be helpful I just don't want to in any way communicate that I think it's behind or not sufficient or anything like that I'm just trying to communicate the differences and you know the content um, contained okay now in um, now when we're comparing the content to Singapore this is um, what Singapore considers second grade and you will notice that by chapter 5 we're in multiplication multiplication isn't covered at all in math lessons for a living education grade level 2 and we have been doing it now for several weeks as you can see so um, we will end the year in multiplication of fives I think multiplication tables okay it doesn't say but I think we go up to the, t the fives times tables in here in second grade uh, we also get into some um, fraction work and um, a, a good long bit with money which I was pleased with because this first workbook only had I think one one lesson with money so I was kind of concerned so I was glad to see we're gonna hit that <laughs> later on but anyway so you see that the scope and sequence is really different for what each each company calls second grade now I did look at the the BGU press grade 2 they do a very similar scope and sequence to Singapore so those two are pretty much right on they just teach the concepts in a different way but as far as what they teach in content they're similar but this this would be um, more comparable to BJU Press Math 1 which is why that's the comparison I'm making um, 
between those two. And then I'm using this to show you the differences between this and Singapore math. So I hope that's helpful to you. One other thing that I'll mention is um, there are lots more word problems in this book than in BGU Press Math. <coughs> so if you were to walk away from this review and think, okay, no problem, I love this approach to math, I still want to use it, I'll just use it for first grade. Oh no, where's it at? I'm going to have to get to a, a, here you go. There are a ton more word problems. BJU Press Math, I didn't think, offered enough word problems in first grade. This has a ton. Um, I don't think it's an inappropriate amount at all, um, but they do give them a lot of practice with word problems, and I think that's actually really good because those are like the real world, real world applications of math. Okay, the next comparison I will make, um, oh, borrow and carry. I did look to see when that happens in this. Borrow and carry in uh, addition and subtraction isn't till down here, regrouping, all the way down here. So this is um, about when BJU Press Math introduced it. It was, it was down towards the end of the year. In their supplemental lessons, they also offered multiplication practice in first grade. So um, this here doesn't offer any multiplication uh, introduction or anything like that. It just, it just gets to borrow and carry, and it's not really a comprehensive covering of it. It's just an introduction to it. Um, let me look, I have some notes over here. Okay, I am going to show you the review. Um, this has a weekly review. Okay, on day five of each week, there is a weekly review and like an, a whole concept review on this page. So, or not whole concept, I'm sorry, whole course. So something that could be anything that was taught from this point forward, okay? So a comprehensive review or cumulative, I think is the word, I'm sorry, that's what I'm looking for. So on day five, they'll do a chapter or a week review of things that they covered that week, but then they'll also have some review of something that they've covered in a, in a previous week. In Singapore, they have reviews what end up being about once a month. Okay, review there. Okay, this review is a little more, but look, look, this review here, and then there wasn't another one to the end. So, and their reviews are several pages long. My son is doing the end of his review now, and I think he had three other sheets like this with, with problems on it, and that's what a review is. So, it's, it's, there is review in Singapore, but it's just not as regular. It ends up being, like I said, about every month they review. In BJU Press, they have a cumulative review every single day. It's not a lot. It's maybe only you know five or six problems of you know a particular concept that was covered before, but it's weekly. So I did notice that was a difference between all three of them. BGU reviews daily from previously taught concepts. Math Lessons for Living Education reviews weekly. Singapore reviews about monthly. All right, a couple more things here. The, um, the variety of activities, okay? This is pretty much just a straight up do your math problems, okay? <laughs> there's, no, there's no real, uh, you know, variety of activities or games or anything like that. Now, if you get the home instructor's guide, they do have uh, different things for teaching the concept, but not like, you know, doing any kind of um, projects, crafts, games, activities in the actual um, student work portion. This has recipes, this has mazes, this has coloring, this has, I want to find a recipe here to show you. Uh, and it does it often. There's actually a, an exercise in the geometry section to make a quilt. Is that a recipe? No. But there are, I just want to show you uh, what are the recipes in here? So this this has a ton of different activities, a lot of hands-on, and the difference between this and BJU Press uh, for activities, because BJU Press has a slew of activities that you could do in addition to, but that's it. They're in addition to the lesson. So you teach a lesson, and then oh here you can go and do all these activities for enrichment. The difference between this and BJU Press's activities is this makes the activity the lesson. So when you make a quilt and you bake a recipe, that's your lesson for the day. So you're not, you're not having to pick and choose, oh, I want to really want to do this, but um, oh, why can't I find a recipe now? I really want to do this activity, but you know, 
after, by the time we get the lesson done, here we go. Here's one of the recipes. So I really want to do this activity, but by the time you get the lesson done, there's not going to be enough time. Well, this, this is actually your lesson for the day. Okay. So this is, you know, what you do. So I really like that, that it doesn't make me feel like I have to pick and choose between some of the nice little projects and things like that, that I want to try. They're just built into the lessons. So I liked that. But like I said, BGU Press has all of those things, but those are considered enrichment, you know, things you can do in addition to the lesson. So that, that was just a little something that I noted. And one other thing when it comes to the activities, I noticed that they have like mazes and things like that on day five, like, okay, like something like this. If I would have given this to my son in second grade, he would have looked at me like, mom, what are we doing? Like, it's just, it's some of it. I understand, you know, a gentle approach. And for the most part, I really like it. But some of these things are, are, and the, the day five review are really too simplistic for my son at a second grade level. At a first grade level, it would have been stretching it. He he might have been okay with it, but like he would have been okay with something like this. It's just it's just here here and there. Like I want to find one of the mazes. Okay, like this. Like this would have been great for him last year in first grade. He would have loved this. I want to find one of the mazes. Okay, this. This maze here, like, if I would have given this to him to do for his, like, assignment, <laughs> like, in second grade, like, like right now, he, he would have probably been upset that I didn't give him something more challenging. So, I, the, only, the only thing I noticed that about was this day five review. Some of, that, some of these exercises just don't fit with the rest of the level of the book. Because I don't feel like the rest of the level of the book is necessarily light. I feel that what it covers, it covers well, it covers completely, but I don't, I, I feel like those exercise five activities, maybe they're given intentionally to be light because it's the end of a week and you know, you want your, your 